I'm Eric Tiquet. Uh, I'm what we call Deputy Director for Innovation and Digital Transformation. That's a big title. And what I'm going to say here is just my view doesn't apply completely to the ministry I'm representing today. So what I'm going to talk is not too much technical today. It's just a journey we are, we are going through. And uh, what's going to happen is um, I'm going to share all of what's happening. And I'm really happy to, to get some feedback and suggestions from you guys. You are the, uh, the one making the technology. I am part of the people who are transforming administration. So we need to, uh, we need to mix. So uh, basically, what's the ministry inter interior in France? We have two main purposes. It's secure people and goods and making democracy a reality and make it work. So we are running the elections and stuff like that, okay? So, I mean, feel free in France, this is the ministry taking care for you, and you, we should, not, you should not see us when it's, everything is fine. Uh, what's gonna... Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> uh, uh, we are not very digital. We are many people on the streets, uh, behind desks, and so on, and so on, and so on. So what's going to happen in France, let's widen a little bit our, our view, is we, in France, uh, decided a couple of years ago, as many countries in Europe and the world, to go to a digital transformation pass. And our approach is what we call a doctrine. A doctrine will be a rules. It's we want to go, and we have to go cloud first. So regulation says everything in France, new digital project, must go to the cloud. Plenty of sort of clouds. <laughs> and, and what is a little bit special is we, as Ministry of Interior, we are a cloud provider. So we run on-prem, not only on-prem, and uh, we can see, uh, and, uh, and yes, that's, that's what we do. But we like things, we maintain things. So we have very old stuff just close to cloud. So everything which is put and has to run all the time. So we maintain a lot of very uh, vintage technology, uh, nearly all the mainframe, if you see what I mean. So we, this is what we have to do, is how to address those different ages. Uh, people in ministry may have seen in their career about three to four um, breaking through generation of technology. So we have to think ahead, and, and sometimes we are moving very slow, but uh, the, our purpose is just to, uh, let's say, sustain it over the time. Uh, whoops. Uh, so what we do is we invest in the clouds. Uh, currently, we have uh, what's on the left, uh, which is legacy IT, as everybody knows. And we had the YAS uh, platform for about five to six years, uh, which is only uh, OpenStack. And uh, it's about, uh, it's not CPU, it's core, sorry, I make a mistake. And we are building a new platform with Red Hat, which is, uh, we renew the OpenStack, so we have a big move uh, currently, about thousand of tenants, and we are building something based on Kubernetes. We, I'm going to show you that later. So we are moving from, from a philosophy which is, we'll run it for you, don't don't, uh, okay, everything's going to be fine, to something which is more close to you run it, you, if you build it, you're running and you support it. We want to share with the developer uh, the responsibility or, or the way making things work. We, we believe it's, it's the target. So, uh, so how do we do that? Uh, how we did uh, think about that? Um, let's say for people who has worked in very, let's say, ages organizations, uh, things are very uh, compartmented, uh, processes are difficult to move, I mean to change and so on. And if we just want to make an incremental innovation, uh, maybe in the next century it might be done. So we decide to go to disruptive approach and to offer something what's called for the people who are doing marketing, blue ocean strategy, that means you offer something new, you don't discuss about the details, you say what you do currently in um, months, you can do it in days or even minutes. Would you like it? Generally, the answer is, mm, I'm going to think maybe. So, so just to give you the idea. Um, the second thing is, uh, yeah, there was too much thing to change, process, technology, and so on, so we decided to go to Greenfield. The second thing is, it, we, we decide, because there's 
um, part of the ministry which is very likely to, uh, linked to uh, open source. We even have a Debian developer in-house. Uh, so um, we decided to go open source. So more, the, the first thing is community, but with some, some vendor support like Red Hat for, for OCP. So we choose OCP. And then uh, the rest is we also outsource our code. So uh, here is the link. It's a, it's a GitHub, uh, so it's in French. Uh, but you will find a few, you will find the design documents and you will find also incrementally the code we are doing. So you will see. So uh, that's the way we do it. Uh, I'm going to went. So wh what is the product? So the product is, as you understand at the beginning, is we transform the ministry, but not only us, the others. And what we had to offer, what was a real big problem to solve, is the pipeline. It's not the running part, it's just the pipeline. How do we co do code, how we maintain the quality of the code? Most of the developers are now uh, from the lockout and, and, and the COVID and whatever, are working outside. So before a padding was you have to be on our house to work, and now the paradigm is you, you many of the people are outside the world. So we had to make a bridge between those two, between our secured server and the developer which are outside. So what we did is we, we just look at the problem and we said, okay, should we do it with one thing as generally proposed? We say, yeah, okay, but then that's mean you have to mix between uh, uh, agility, ergonomy and security and developer want freedom and we want security. So it doesn't match, so everyone wins, but it's always going to be security that wins. So we decide to separate the problem. The developer on his side has his own CI, CD, his own pipeline, everywhere he wants, as soon as we agree on. What, do, what we just required is that the developer give us, the developer is the team, huh? just well, not only one, is the team, is they just deliver good code without bugs and without CV. Okay, and it's just done by a contract. And then we have in the middle our pipeline, which is taking from the uh, point of truth the code and the infrastructure of code. Oh, we don't trust the developer too much, so we copy the code, <laughs> check it, rebuild the stuff, do our SAS and DAST uh, uh, checking, and so on and so on. And then we put the code, uh, I mean, the, the, the container, the container into another point of truth with an infrastructure, and then the deal is the, the, the interface is GitOps. So the cluster pull the code and make it run. And this approach feel, make everybody com comfortable because the developer has own, uh, let's say, area of liberty, uh, freedom, sorry. And, and we manage and we can do audit as much as we want. It can take hours to run, we don't mind. That's not the point. And, um, and the other thing is another benefit of this approach, so it's going to be op uh, open source, huh? just in, in case you're interested. Uh, the other approach, we don't want everyone to come, uh, to come on our cloud because it's very costly to, to manage a cloud and to build a cloud. So we want other people to use the benefits of public clouds. So we said trusted clouds because, uh, because of foreign laws and someone in the, uh, in the morning have, have talked about that. So that means this approach with GitOps, we already made the, some tests, which are very, uh, let's say, enjoying, is you can run it everywhere. That's the point. So everywhere on the cloud, on the cloud we trust. So that's what we are building. So the way we're also building is uh, more on doing it open. So, so I mean, to, 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 to confront something new, to make, uh, let's say, make sure people are there and, and mainly the developer community, we need to listen to them or to make them abroad, uh, on board. So uh, what we've done is we decided to go on Agile at scale. So we're using the, uh, the safe framework. And what you see here is just a cartoon about one of the uh, PI plannings. Or you can see uh, we, you, we use the parrot metaphor. So you have a lot of pirates uh, doing things, and uh, this is what we do. So um, uh, the, the most of all, uh, this is really the human element, which is uh, key for us. And I see we have to progress here regarding gender equality. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, but this is mainly a team, and I would like uh, let's say, to thank all these, those teams uh, and every people. They are really highly motivated by the product. They are the one doing the job. So uh, at the end, you can um, applause them because they are doing very hard work. Uh, where are we today? 
Am I good in the timing? Yeah, it's okay. So we, we might take some questions. So we are not yet on production. So, um, but we've learned some lessons so far. It's about one year we are doing a that journey. The thing is, open source was the good idea because we never had so much feedback and so much suggestion if we did not use uh, open source. Um, the, the, the promise, which is ongoing, and you know, guys, this is happening, this is to deploy a software in, in a vendor like ours, it's about six months to ten months journey. It's very long, it's very complicated with a security check and whatever. And now, uh, okay, you have to prepare a little bit, but we know we can bring down it to, to a couple of days, even hours. And the reality for small application, it's done in minutes. I mean, the Argo Sigi, when you see the stuff running, it's like, uh, okay, it's done. Um, uh, the other thing is, it's Kubernetes is really robust. Uh, this is our, our feedback. When it runs, it runs. Okay, it's slow to start, but when it runs, it runs. It's really uh, appreciable <laughs> when you do that. That's it. Okay, let's kill a pod. There's no problem. It will start. You know, it's magical when you, other people don't believe us. And more of all, what we've done in parallel of building the platform, we are transforming some, plat some applications, and we are training the people. Because if you don't do the same, I mean, everything at the same time, you can wait another, it's going to take you some edges. So we train people not to Kubernetes, not to agility, we train them to DevOps. So we took one of what we found was really interesting uh, training uh, uh, on SAFE, which is the DevOps, which is not technical. And we put on those sessions, we mix the people between uh, the business people, the tech people. The, for, for them, to envisage uh, what could be the new experience working with us, in fact, working with, with the platform. Okay, I'm fine. And then uh, what also, so we were very surprised because at our beginning, we thought like, okay, it's going to take some time. Well, nobody's going to uh, follow us and so on and so on. No, 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 it's not happening this way. It's you get really, really, really fast. People said, ah, I cannot solve this problem anymore. Can you help us? It's really happening, and, and that's an issue because we were not planning going so fast. So we regulate a little bit uh, who is coming to us, and what we found we're going to see that on, on the downside is you need to have a learning path, really. You need to make sure the people are getting on board at the right speed, but not too fast, because this is really new paradigm. They, they don't even imagine that it is possible. I can remember some discussion with people from security. Uh, the guy says, what? You can scale everything in your in your registry and make a report about what's going on? Yes, we can. So a simple thing like that would change their mind. They, they said, wow, OK. Can you do it regularly? Yes, of course we can. Can we have it before? Yes, OK, because we know what we have on, 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 on the prem. The other thing is, uh, this is a new discovery. This is every vendor doesn't, full, I mean, most of the vendors we have worked with doesn't run uh, natively on OpenShift without effort. Uh, just a simple thing about rootless, uh, most of the developers they just pick something on Git, uh, whatever, and just make it run. Okay, it's running. Well, yeah, but it comes to OpenShift, things are different, which is a good thing. But however, you need to prepare the people and you need to tell them before that, okay, you can do it fast, but you have to think about those stuff. And then uh, the rest is for organic architects, you have to transform your architect people just to make sure that they, 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 they split the model it. And also the main thing is not fully about going to microservices, it's more the organization coupling, which is a nightmare. So if you don't think about your coupling, the organization coupling, I mean, nothing will go at the, at the speed you mean, what you want. And then uh, that's the main thing I, I wanted to share with you. So if we, on time, three minutes, we can maybe take a couple of questions. So maybe you can upload the team you, if you want. Just maybe they can hear or no. They are listening. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. guys, this is for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. A couple of questions, maybe. Yeah. Ah, uh, our ladies first, or yeah, <laughs> yeah, please.
Yeah. Are all your OpenStack um, CPUs moving to OpenShift, or is that a separate cluster? It's, it's separate things, in fact. We have an OpenStack and an OpenShift. Okay. We mix both on, uh, on OpenShift on YES or OpenShift of bar metal. We mix a different of the, of the, the application. Hello, uh, my name is Levan Taksoy. I'm from Turkey. Uh, my question is about uh, uh, your, I mean, uh, your data, your sensitive data. Is there any regulation in your country in order to give you a permission to put your, uh, put your uh, sensitive data to the hyperscaler or, or public cloud? Because the main problem is in our country, the, uh, in police department or minister of interior, uh, they they want to uh, make uh, this uh, okay, uh, but uh, they are ready to put their application to the cloud, but they are not ready to put their data to the cloud. So data and the application uh, should be separate within their perspective. Uh, okay, and it's it's also uh, something related about the regulations. So is there any specific security? concern that you consider about this transformation? Yeah, good question. Thank you very much. Um, yes, we do. Uh, we do. Let's say look at that. Um, on this cloud, I just put the slide. You see here two, uh, two classifications. In fact, which is what we call standard or non-protected can go whatever they want, as soon as they know how to, pro how to secure the data, meaning having backups, make sure the data is, is uh, I'm sure to say, integre, uh, integre, integre, someone can help me to integre, okay. So, uh, but for something which is what we call sensible data or sensible use case, uh, it's only on-prem. On it's only on-prem and we have separate, separate zone. We don't owe to confidential zone, this we don't need. But uh, what we could restrict it, that's main police data and stuff like that. We, we run the election on those kind of things, so we don't want to put that on the cloud. Does it answer? Or just one, maybe one question. We had the light, some sun's light uh, a few minutes ago. Thank you, the Netherlands, for that. Okay.